I mean, he, he just took to it like food, dumped like water. Of course, he's been kind of doing it informally his whole life, you know. Um, Gary's always on stage. So, uh, I'm very pleased. You're going to enjoy this. Come on out. Gary Evans. but I don't think I can. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Now, I'll just tell you a little story here about a story David just told about the guy from Atlanta. When he, when the guy comes up and says, hey, David, I'm the guy from Atlanta that you told the story about. David felt really awkward because that story really didn't happen. Well, kind of the same situation just happened to me when I started because I'm sitting in the back room and on my fourth set, fourth uh, fourth story in my second set, I'm going to try to impersonate Jimmy McCauley. <laughs> and Jimmy walks into the back room with a, with a four, piece, four foot piece of hardwood. <laughs> I don't care who you are, that's god darn awkward. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to forge ahead notwithstanding. I have to tell you about the kind of kind of what I'm going here is about stories and uh, it gets worse because I see Cletus failing sitting here and, and half of my second set's about his mother uh, that's going to be tough but uh, we moved here from Toronto in 1969 and I was nine years old and uh, uh, a, a really huge difference between Toronto and Morel Rear as it then was um, lots of things were different uh, Everything. <laughs> anyway, I had never played organized hockey before, although I had played other sports. So Spot McCarthy got me keen to play hockey, so uh, we joined up in hockey, and Bomber McDonald was our coach. And uh, the first game, uh, I guess the first game that we played outside of Morel was in St. Peter's. So we loaded up into the bus, and this is my first memory of St. Peter's, and we loaded up into the bus, and we, we got in there, and you know we put the sticks by the gear shift, put the bags in the first two seats, and then everybody heads to the back. And uh, we're driving down the road. I might as well have been going to the saddle, though, to play hockey. Because I had never played a game away from Morel, or never played organized hockey before. And we get to Morel, uh, get to St. Peter's, and then I saw it. We turned the corner by the bridge, and then we pulled over to the side, and there was Aquinas Ryan out on the bay. With a long coat on and a hat with a feather in the side. And everybody scurrying around. He looked like a big goose with a whole bunch of little. And everybody was playing hockey on the bay. They weren't fooling when they said, We're going to the bay to play hockey. Anyway, St. Peter's is like uh, a lot of, and well, like every other community on PEI. I mean, it's close, and, and people pay attention to what anybody else does. If somebody goes up the road, you're looking. Anybody with them? I wonder where they're going so fast. You can't really get away from your neighbors in, in, in a place like St. Peter's or Morel or anywhere else. But what's interesting about a place like St. Peter's is that it generates characters. Characters come out of the blue. People that are not just the same as everybody else. They're different. And we have characters in PEI, and that's what I guess I noticed more than anything when I started doing this, or started when I, when I moved here, was the characters. So a couple of the characters that we have are wonderful people that are in politics. And one of those characters just lives up the road, Lawrence McGowan. I was given one of the best treats of my life here about four months ago when Alan Rankin met me in Charlottetown and he told me a story. He told me this story. He was up in Ottawa, and he's a, he was a high-ranking official for the Liberal Party, and uh, he was up working in, on Parliament Hill, and he was sitting at a desk. And then all of a sudden, this knock came on the door, the door opened. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Alan says, well, I'm just working, Lawrence. Well, what are you working on? Well, I'm just working on provincial stuff. Well, tell me this. Do you want to go see the Dalai Lama? And, and Alan says, the Dalai Lama? 
I'd love to see the Dalai Lama. Well, geez, if you want to go see the Dalai Lama, come on, then we go. <laughs> so, so Alan goes tagging along behind him. He goes, Lawrence, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, geez, if you want to go see the Dalai Lama, we'll go see the Dalai Lama. <laughs> what do you mean we're going to see the Dalai Lama? So Lawrence starts walking down this hallway. And Alan's got a pretty good idea. He doesn't have a clue where he's going. So he's walking along, and he sees these doors. That one wouldn't open. He goes to the next one. That one wouldn't open. And then all of a sudden, he goes, and this one opens. He looks at the open door and walks in. And Alan's in behind him. Well, perfect. Except they walked into a committee room. <coughs> where the Dalai Lama was addressing cabinet. And the problem is, Alan said, is they walked in behind the Dalai Lama. So Alan said, I was terrified. He said, the Dalai Lama has security with him. And it's not these stupid guys that are with the president with the glasses on instead. These guys are bald, he said. And they don't have guns. They have the balls with the knives in them and they throw them at him. So they're walking into this room. So. The presentation to cabinet stops, and the Dalai Lama turns around to see who's behind them, which was a perfect opportunity for Lawrence to walk up. Lawrence Macaulay from the gym. <laughs> so he shook hands with the Dalai Lama, and this is Alan Rankin from Canada. So. That was pretty much all Lawrence wanted to say to the Dalai Lama. So then what he does is he walks out to the end to see who's in the crowd. <laughs> what, you going on? what are you doing here? Jesus Christ. <laughs> so that was enough, so he disrupted everything. So then he steps off the stage and walks across the hallway and exits the room, and Alan's behind him. And Alan's really embarrassed at this point, and he says, Lawrence, were you even invited to that? Geez, no, I wasn't invited to that. I'm not a member of campus. <laughs> well, I said, what were we doing? What, what did you do that for? Well, I'll tell you right now, if the Dalai Lama's in Parliament Hill, I have a right to see him. <laughs> and so do you. <laughs> and we did. and then he turns around and he says, Alan, those lambs, do you figure they're liberals or Tories? <laughs> so, I never thought of that, a lamb. <laughs> so we have other political characters of this province too. And one of them is from Cornwall, Ronnie McKinley. <laughs> Now, before I tell you this story, there are two things I have to set the story with. The story happened in 1997, and this is as true as, as anything, because it happened to me. The story was in 1997. And if you remember 1997, it was about a year after um, the Tories swept to power.